information leading to the arrest of the Mexican drug kingpin known as El Mencho. Hi and welcome to True Crime, a channel dedicated to the dark underworld of criminal activity carried out by gangsters, mobsters, cartel leaders, and others. Given the current state of Mexico, where significant portions of the population territory and economy are still under the control of criminal organizations, it is crucial to understand that the fluctuations in violence are primarily driven by the whims of the illicit markets rather than government policies or their absence. This holds true even in regions where violence has remained stable or shown fluctuations. Notably, the powerful cartel Jalisco Nuva Generation and the Sinaloa cartel employ diverse tactics to maintain their power locally, showcasing the complex interplay between escalating political environments, structural components, and criminal organizational leadership. Traditionally regarded as Mexico's most potent criminal gang, the Sinaloa cartel now faces attacks from the CJNG, which has exhibited expansionary tendencies since 2015. As experts in law enforcement from both the United States and Mexico attest, the CJNG represents the changing dynamics of transnational criminal organization activity and violence in Mexico. Rising swiftly and ruthlessly, the CJNG has become one of the most powerful criminal organizations globally, serving as a role model for modern transnational criminal organizations. However, amid speculations of El Mencho's demise, one may wonder how the CJNG manages to thrive without his visible presence. How does it gain control using newer strategies? These questions will be explored in detail, so stay tuned till the end of this video. Before delving into further details, it's important to subscribe for free, like the video to boost the algorithm, and leave comments, which are highly welcomed. When considering the CJNG's control, it is believed that the top commanders, including El Mencho's wife and daughter, hold significant influence. Although the CJNG and the Sinaloa cartel both possess power over economies and populations, the Sinaloa cartel's strategic plan heavily relies on controlling the entire vertical chain of legal and illegal enterprises. On the other hand, the CJNG has adopted the role of a tax master and occasional franchise licensor, taxing all local enterprises without establishing full control over the country's economic vertical chain. The CJNG grants permits for the sale of illegal goods, such as tortillas, tobacco, alcohol, as well as illicit activities like prostitution and drug trafficking. The cartel's recently captured territories resemble those in the state of Alaska, demonstrating its expanding reach. While the CJNG may lack the same intricate connections to local politicians and businesses as seen in Medellin's criminal infrastructure under Pablo Escobar, their strategy bears similarities to the infamous Medellin cartel. Despite being 15 years behind the Sinaloa cartel in their goal of seizing control of the entire vertical chain, the CJNG's taxation can be more burdensome and less adaptable for local enterprises and communities. Additionally, unlike the Sinaloa cartel, the CJNG's takeover and control rely on blatant brutality. It achieves its goals through overt violence, surpassing any other group in the region. This audacity, violence, and aggressive expansion define the CJNG's tactical and strategic approach, making their takeover and daily interactions highly uncomfortable for communities and major corporations. In contrast to the Sinaloa cartel's fee collectors, often described as reserved criminals and tolerable extortionists, the CJNG operators are known for their brash, intimidating demeanor, making their presence a source of discomfort and a significant challenge to overcome. The CJNG's brazenness is evident in its frequent displays of firepower, cutting-edge weapons, and high-profile public executions. The National Guard and Mexican police forces find themselves outclassed by the cartel's potent assault weapons. The stunning recordings of the CJNG's arsenal strength and its ability to mobilize a large number of soldiers and vehicles are showcased without any apparent effort from the Mexican government to curb such coercion. Not only does the CJNG flaunt its impunity and bravery, 
but it also shows no hesitation in attacking police stations, police cars, and even targeting police personnel in their homes. Both the CJNG and the Sinaloa cartel aim to intimidate, bribe, and trap Mexican government officials at all levels, as well as security personnel, including local police officers, National Guard troops, and officials from security and defense ministries. While the Sinaloa cartel exercises more covert power, the CJNG has gained a negative reputation for its repeated attacks on police stations, officers, and local communities using weaponized drones. The CJNG derives much of its power from openly employing brutality and intimidation enabled by aggressive propaganda to maintain a rule of terror that prevents communities from rising against their hegemony. To achieve this, the CJNG seeks to eliminate or detain local community leaders, mirroring tactics used by armed opposition groups like the Taliban in Afghanistan or the Shabab in Somalia. Local clergy, doctors, and educators become primary targets in the power struggle between the CJNG, the Sinaloa cartel, and local groups like Cardos Unidos in Michoacan. In contrast to other organizations, such as Cardos Unidos and Tierra Caliente, the CJNG has not resorted to the same level of social intrusion in dictating what lectures or priests should preach. Additionally, the CJNG refrains from criticizing or organizing against local clergy and educators. However, in Michoacan, teachers and priests claim that Cardos Unidos significantly promotes a criminal values-based ideology. Moreover, the CJNG has exerted control over illegal mining in Michoacan, Mexico, which has sparked outrage among indigenous tribes. After several deaths and disappearances linked to the CJNG, the Nahula indigenous community has blocked a major highway and halted activities at an iron mine, demanding that authorities take more action to locate two recently missing indigenous citizens. On January 15, authorities received a complaint regarding the disappearance of a social activist and environmentalist in Aquila, Michoacan. Three Nahua community guards from Santa Maria de Estula, located just south of Aquila, were assassinated on January 13, and the Jalisco Cartel New Generation, also known as Xigenji, was promptly held responsible. The Nahua community recounted how the CJNG forcefully entered Santa Maria de Estula and Aquila, providing evidence through recordings where the CJNG claimed responsibility for the deaths. In the same statement, the community expressed their frustration with the complete absence of government assistance in combating local organized crime. Instead, security personnel had harassed and disarmed indigenous guards, as reported by locals who spoke to the Mexican Daily El Universal. On January 6, CJNG members attempted to penetrate the municipal town hall in Aquila, but were repulsed after a prolonged shootout with townspeople. Additionally, homemade bombs were discovered in the town and linked to the gang. Michoacan is rich in resources such as gold, silver, iron, lead, and zinc, making it a prime location for illegal mining. The conflict between the CJNG and Cardos Unidos, a local organization vying for control of the state's illegal mining and drug trafficking routes, has led to an increase in violence. Furthermore, a legal battle between Eternium and nearby villages over alleged non-payment of royalties has exacerbated tensions. During these conflicts, even the mining firm has been implicated in the disappearance of the two missing men. It is plausible that criminal organizations ship the mined iron to China in exchange for chemicals used to produce synthetic narcotics, although no concrete evidence has been presented. Synthetic drugs are frequently intercepted at the port of Lazaro Cardenas, and the CJNG is one of the organized crime groups involved in smuggling them into the U.S. These ongoing conflicts in neighborhood communities highlight the need for more efforts to control Michoacan's valuable mining resources. The indigenous communities fighting against the cartels continue to suffer, emphasizing the struggle for control between the CJNG, the Sinaloa cartel, and the local groups. The CJNG often needs to co-op not only local social influencers, but more crucially, local criminal groups as well.
As the aggressive conqueror, the CJNG initiates collaboration through the murder of local criminal leaders, forcing the remaining gang members to submit to CJNG rule. However, shifting dynamics have been observed, with the CJNG providing more social benefits compared to other cartels, such as gifts for children, cleaning supplies for families, and computers for schools. This higher spending capacity stems from the CJNG's growth and approach. The CJNG has responded swiftly to the 2021 earthquake, engaging recent graduates in social sciences to conduct surveys on social needs and preferences within communities. Unemployed chemists and engineers are also recruited for the production and transportation of meth and fentanyl. The growth of the CJNG follows a trajectory from violence to sympathy to dependence, as explained by a Michigan community activist interviewed in October 2021. However, it seems that the CJNG has made limited efforts to meet the needs of the communities, as violent crimes and drone attacks continue to proliferate throughout the state. Maintaining firm control over captured territory and internal cohesion remains a challenge for the CJNG. Implementing plans and providing services becomes difficult when resources are directed towards defending against invaders, fighting factions, or expanding territorially. Moreover, the CJNG's local lieutenants, like those of other cartels, lack adept strategists who understand the importance of gaining political capital among local populations. CJNG's interference in the June 2021 Mexican midterm elections reached unprecedented levels of brazenness and visibility, suggesting their desire to take credit for the help and favors provided by politicians, thereby solidifying their influence. In conclusion, the elongated silence of El Mencho raises questions about the CJNG's intentions and future actions. How can the Mexican government effectively address the CJNG's aggressive tactics, its interference in local politics, and its continued disregard for the well-being and safety of indigenous communities? What measures can be taken to protect and support these communities in their fight against the cartels? Thank you for watching another amazing video from our true crime team. Like, comment, and subscribe, and stay tuned to our next real-life true crime video.